Uh, I think uh, a lot of enlightenment talk by Dr. Talwar and as usual, when Sir says, uh, so our job becomes much easier, you know, and uh, then uh, this is, this is, uh, this is what I was, uh, you know, expected to talk about my feel-good cases. So I'll, I'll actually will stand on uh, Sir's shoulder and then I'll show a few of the cases. And which I was just thinking whether uh, Sir knows my cases earlier also, and accordingly he has, you know, given his talk. So uh, 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 maybe uh, is is exactly what Sir has told. I have a few cases to share with you. So whenever you have a, a feel-good cases. Before that, let me uh, share with you a feel bad cases. So this is a, a, a 56 year old lady who presented to me just, uh, you know, last year pre COVID uh, uh, lockdown period. And she ha she was, uh, I, I have advised uh, considering this condition, she has a poor control, glycemic control. So we have, uh, I thought that I'll do this PRP. You can see the fresh PRP marks. And then we, we uh, I have advised her for giving anti vegf injection because you have a flat proliferation. There is no traction as such. So, uh, mm, but again, uh, she has to go back and then uh, she, uh, due to lockdown, she got stuck and could not come. Three months later when she can come to me is this. So when you have a macular traction and this kind of proliferation has progressed, and had a uh, in between she had a COVID and she has a progression of this disease. So it is a total, um, uh, and at this point of time, it is very difficult. Already traction retinal detachment has started. So uh, we have added some more amount of the laser to the periphery and advice for uh, surgery. But again, glycemic control was not good at that point of time, could not do anything. She went back and again stuck and came back another three months later. This is the situation. So this time there was no other option other than the going ahead for the surgery. We finished surgery and uh, she is having 636 vision starting from 612, 618 vision. So this is how we have over a period of time, we have, you know, uh, this is uh, the gradual, you know, progression of the disease, which actually could have prevented by combining at the initial phase. So this is how in, in, in one frame, you can see the, how the progression of the disease has occurred. This is the other eye. I, I could, uh, when she has come for the second time, the, I saw that there is similar kind of thing is, is in the other eye. So I have given uh, the injection in this eye and she's enjoying vision in that eye in spite of uh, uh, not very tight control of the blood sugar level. So uh, in, this is a good case for showing a, a feel good case as well as good case to show the comparison of both the eyes. So I'll put to my uh, case two. This is this is uh, already a Pascal laser has been done in in one case, and we did uh, uh, um, uh, fluorescent angiography. And this case was showing those multiple areas of leaking, both superiorly, inferiorly. So uh, there was a presence of uh, significant uh, neovascularization even after laser treatment. Also, uh, so we thought that yes, there are some skip areas in between. So we can put uh, uh, additional laser, but before that, if we can. And uh, combine with anti vegf and that's what uh, is, uh, has been uh, initiated. And then you can see there is a lot of regression of those initial phases, and then uh, you can very precisely, you know, add up laser in these areas. So that's what we have done, and the patient was doing very well. This is a case three when again uh, <coughs> a patient who is have a lot of peripheral. Uh, CNP areas along with there is a neovascularization and there are uh, significant amount of the leaking microaneurysm in the posterior pole and uh, so we we have planned for the combined treatment initially given anti vegf and that this is the result after the anti vegf treatment and this is has been you know planned for the laser treatment another similar case but here you have a, this patient is having uh, 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 PDR along with this patient is a patient uh, uh, had a multiple myeloma. So uh, I mean, I mean, both combining PDR along with uh, I mean the uh, diabetic retinopathy, proliferative diabetic retinopathy, and the uh, in presence of multiple myeloma, the chance of progression of the PDR becomes very faster. And as you can see, there is a vasoocclusive phenomenon are very particular and very precise compared to the other diabetic areas, and they have a focal areas of CNP areas as well, and very discrete margin. So uh, this patient combined with, uh, you know, uh, uh, anti-VEGF and then planned for taking up for the 
uh, you can see significant amount of the resolution of uh, macular edema as well. And this patient has been taken up for uh, laser photocoagulation. So the clear cut advantage, what Sarah has told earlier also, the clear cut advantage, what we get from a combined treatment is that it takes care of both VDR and DME at the same platform. So initially, if you can reduce the VEGF load significantly, that you know uh, prevents worsening of the DME after PRP also. So you have a you, uh, you are getting significant amount of the window period by which, and anytime you can top up with anti-VEGF injection over the period of time, whenever uh, some uh, neovascularization is is appearing. And the chance of, which is one of the important part, where sometimes we do face, uh, even after in a frank PRP, uh, frank PR, uh, PDR cases, if you do a PRP, there is a chance of vitreous hemorrhage in those kind of cases. That chance also regresses if you do uh, give anti injection and then start doing PRP after two weeks, three weeks later, so that the aggressive neovascularization goes down. And you get a window period, especially when the, the diabetic control is not very good control. So by this way, I'll just, uh, I have uh, shown few of my cases where I have combined treatment along with laser and anti vegf in case of DME, in case of PDR or PDR with GME. Thank you.